Around the world, people live different lives, doing different things that are unique and make us who we are, writing our own stories and learning new things along the way. We all learn different things. We all face different challenges and obstacles, but manage to get through them one way or another. We as humans go through our own journeys, and we learn as we build our own resilience. No matter how much we get beat down, what matters is how we get back up. And everyone loves a good story. Welcome to the Neil Coots Show. That's when you do the right thing. <laughs> uh, well, I always say uh, technology, you can't live with it, you can't live without it. Is it, yeah? <laughs> yeah. It's... Too true. <laughs> so, yeah, and look, I just wanted to thank you very much for, uh, yeah, chatting with me today, you know, so. Um, great, great pleasure. Yeah, so, you know, I do this uh, podcast where I interview different people around the world, or well, not so much around the world, mainly Australians, but I've gotten a few people overseas, um, but being that I'm, um, you know, I'm invested in Scott Coin. I thought, you know, what great person to have a chat to than yourself, mm-hmm. especially considering that um, when I was chatting to you um, through the email, you corresponded quite quickly. So I thought, yeah, he's someone that should have a bit of time <laughs> on his hands. <laughs> Uh, so, well, I, I I don't know about a bit of time on my hands when we've been busy with our with our um, migration, as as you know. Um, and actually, it, it's very interesting. I mean, the, the 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 one thing that everyone has said is that uh, you know somebody sends an email, and I try to get back to them, you know, within a couple of hours. Yeah, and I guess I kind of have managed that, and everyone's astonished. Yeah, that somebody actually applies to the email within a reasonable length of time, which is which is an interesting side line. Yeah, well, you know, with most projects out there, when you try to communicate with some someone, you you sort of have to give yourself at least twelve hours to expect a response. Um, yeah. You know, there's a there's a, it can be depending on how busy the project is. It could be a lengthy period of time, um, and it can be quite nerve wracking. In I guess in this industry where you know, um, it's not like cryptocurrency is still in the early stages. You know, yeah, we don't absolutely. know we don't know where it's going yet. And when you invest some money into a project, you know, ideally you'd like to see some returns, yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when you don't have that transparency with a project, then it really worries you. And it can affect your mental health in some aspect as well, you know. I heard trading... Mm-hmm. Um, you, when you're trading <coughs> cryptocurrencies, you should uh, be weary of mental depression and stuff like that because it can happen <laughs> to you. <laughs> yes, I could. Um, I can imagine that. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I, <clears throat> there's so many. I mean, the the thing I always say is that um, cryptocurrency is it's just like the Wild West. It's it's uh, you know a bunch of bad cowboys out there, and um, you know if they can take you down, they will. Uh, but I think actually <clears throat> it's quite interesting. We're we're in the middle of uh, being regulated by the um, uh, the FCA in the UK Financial Conduct Authority, oh, okay. and they 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 have a very interesting. Uh, I mean, the the amount of stuff you have to provide them with is absolutely unbelievable. Mm. Um, but uh, you know, when you, and you think to yourself while well, you're doing it, God, this is a waste of time. And then yeah. when you've done it, you realise actually this is really rather comforting because yeah. what they're doing is they're making sure that the people who are busy saying, Hey, buy a cryptocurrency. Yeah. We're great. And you're going to make a fortune and yeah, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. They're making sure that the people who are saying that are actually telling the truth. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that is a very comforting thought. Well, yeah, it's almost like, um, you know, you're, you're getting their stamp of approval and, mm. you know, I think that's really important especially in the early stages, if you really want adoption to take place, you know, Um, because it helps you earn the trust of the people out there when you're doing what you're doing, you know, Um, rather than, like I said before, people being weary of different projects, you know, if you've got that stamp of approval from your local, from your government, then I Mm. guess, you know, um, yeah, it helps you along the way, you know, it helps uh, solidify your foundation and, you know, assist with your process. We 
we took the attitude. I mean, we we've been convinced that regulation was coming for several years now, mm. and, and and it is now here, and that's that's good, or it's on its way anyway. Yeah. Uh, and we we're uh, as I think you know, we're going for an IEO probably towards the latter part of next year, mm. and. One of the things uh, we're in the process of doing is is lining up really top notch people in in the various departments that need covered. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and our thought is that well, you know, if we've got a, a seal of approval from this one and that one and the next one and all the rest of it, people will look at us and say, "Hey, well, these guys have actually done the job right," you know, and that and that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah. So, how how large is the organisation at the moment? Are you guys quite a small outfit at the moment? Um, what's what's that like, or what does it well, look you like at the moment? Well, mean in terms of the people that are doing the work. Yeah. Well, what's in, yeah. like the people involved? Okay, so like, we have we have a what I would describe as a core of about uh, four people, hmm. um, and but there are one of the great things about being. Uh, it's uh, well, the name is on the tin, Scott mm. Coin. One yeah. of the great things about being Scott is that people are very willing to do stuff, um, very willing to do stuff full stop, but they're also mm. willing to do stuff for free. Okay. And we have a, a lot of people who do things for us uh, on what I would describe as a, a pro bono basis. Yeah. Um, and they, they, uh, you know, they, they, they do a lot of work for us, which mm. is great. So, I, 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 yes, we do have four people who are full time, for lack mm. of a better expression. Yeah. Um, and But we have several other people. I mean, I can think of at least two other people who spend their entire lives doing oh, nothing wow. but Scott coin. Wow. Um, and uh, I mean, it's a great help, actually, because yeah. it means that uh, they, they can do a lot of the drudgery and so on, which they do and very happily as well, which mm. is just fantastic. Well, yeah. Well, it's. I guess it's important to have a good community behind it. Like from what mm. I've seen with a lot of the other currencies, you know, depending on how strong the community is, will decide in the future how how much it will flourish. If you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I agree. So, um, yeah, with uh, how can I say? So you've got a core group of four people. Are you looking to expand? Like, is it gonna? Because like the reason why I got involved in Scott Coin, right? is um, basically uh, at the start when I first heard about it, I think it was about two or three years ago, um, originally the idea was to create a coin to take over the British pound because it was something to do with the um, you know United Kingdom disconnecting from the, the EU. So from what I heard initially was the story was that um, the S Scottish government basically wanted to have their own currency. Is that still the current goal? Um, the, I, I think there's two or three different parts to that question. The, mm. the first part is that um, it's not so much about the EU. It's more about uh, Scotland's independence. Mm. And there was, in fact, a referendum in 2014, which was, in fact, lost. Mm. Uh, and Scotcoin was created. We weren't involved at that stage, but mm. at that point, uh, the person who created Scotcoin is a chap called Derek Nesbitt. Yeah. Uh, his thinking was, well, Scotland would need some form of uh, currency to to trade amongst themselves, and so on and so on. Mm. Um, and um, you know, the referendum was then lost, and then he kind of lost interest because it was only himself involved. Mm. Um, and we actually took over in about late 2015, early 2016. Mm. So uh, we have we have uh, actually offered the Scott Coin to the Scottish government. Now there's a there's a variety of problems with that. The first is that in fact uh, currency issues are not devolved. In other words, the Scottish government has no uh, jurisdiction over them uh, at all. Yeah. Um, but that wouldn't preclude them doing what I would describe as a sovereign fund. And in fact, to a certain extent, they've already gone that. They've created uh, uh, the Scottish, um, a, a Scottish investment bank, for lack of a better expression, yeah. which is going to help businesses in one thing or another. My, my attitude about independence is, I mean, I, I, I'm, um, I, I really don't, I mean, it makes no difference to me whether Scotland is independent or not. Yeah. What matters is that all the people of Scotland should be better off. Yeah, yeah. Now, if Scotcoin can help with doing that, then that's a really good thing. And our our um, 
uh, ecosystem that we're actively involved with is what I would describe as the charity ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, very good connections with a variety of different uh, entities that are helping various different disadvantaged members of society. Mm. Um, and we have an ongoing uh, dialogue with people called the IPPR, who are mm. uh, a think tank to do with um, welfare and one thing or another. Um, and, you know, that would be our hope that that uh, that we will be able to assist in maybe, you know, not hundreds, but thousands of people to a better life. Uh, okay. um, and and I, I think we've had a, a little bit of success here and there on that. I mean, it's a it's a huge problem, of course. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, uh, you know, that in, in a sense that the the uh, if you if you strip out the political side of things, um, why, why would you have a cryptocurrency? The answer is you have a cryptocurrency because you want to use it to do something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's all kinds of different things you could do with it, of course. Mm. But I mean, the real point from our point of view is that uh, we, we hope to assist people who are the ones who've lost out in society. Okay. So it's not so much that now that it's going to be a replacement currency, but I guess it's an asset to help people get by is that right yes that that that's true i i think there's a there's a misconception too about cryptocurrencies i mean funnily enough actually i was doing a mm. uh, an investment seminar yesterday with uh, people called yellowstone advisory yeah um and uh they the, one of the questions that came up was um you know when <laughs> when do you think cryptocurrencies will replace fiat currencies you mm. know pounds dollars and so on yeah and I said, well, I think that's a misconception because I don't actually see that um, cryptocurrency will ever replace uh, fiat currencies. I mean, if you if you think about it, your own bank account is in a sense a cryptocurrency because yeah. you know you can't see or feel or anything. But the, the, you know, there's a line of code which says you've got ten ten dollars or whatever it is in your bank account, and that's yeah. the, that's the same with with cryptocurrencies. You've yeah. got a line of code which says you've got half a scott coin or whatever it is yeah um and the i mean i i, I always uh, people people accuse me of banging on about this but there is in fact a cryptocurrency which has been around since the 1930s all right and that is called veer w-i-r yeah. and it's in switzerland and it started uh, in the 1930s because no one had any liquidity of any description yeah and uh, a bunch of swiss people got together and said well we have to have some method of keeping track between ourselves we haven't got any money to change hands yeah we'll use the veer and yeah. they did and veer veer in german means us or we yeah but it also stands for some incredibly complicated german phrase which i can't for the life of me <laughs> remember um but the the point about it is that it's still going today and mm. it, there's about seventy thousand businesses that accept veer there's about six or seven hundred thousand people who have veer mm. uh and it turns over you know four or five billion swiss francs a year yeah. so that's you know that's a serious serious bit of kit yeah and yeah. the the great thing about it is i mean you can walk into a you know a shop in switzerland and say uh Oh, I want to buy a sofa, and the man says, "Oh, that'll be a thousand Swiss francs." And yeah. you say, "Well, I haven't, I haven't actually got a thousand Swiss francs, but guess what? I've got seven hundred, and I've got three hundred veer." Yeah, yeah. And the man says, "Oh, that's fine," and he just does it. That's it. You know, in yeah. the story. And then he he goes to some of his suppliers, and they say, "You know, that'll be a hundred thousand Swiss francs, please." And he says, "Well, I've only got sixty-seven thousand, but I've got thirty-three thousand veer here." Oh, that's no problem, and that's that's the way it works, and and you know it it goes down the the supply chain as it yeah. were. Um, uh, I mean, Veer has a lot of what I would describe as uh, characteristics which which I personally wouldn't want to engage with, but uh, it works for them, and and it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you will always think you know. Bank accounts are almost like databases or just like the blockchain, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Not much different, um, you know, because especially these days, they're trying to do away with actual physical cash for all sorts of reasons, you know. And, you know, it's becoming almost basically everyday normal life to have a card of some sort that holds your, well, doesn't really hold your money, but it connects you to that database, you know, whether it's mm. a Visa card, a MasterCard or a debit card, you know. It's unlike the days when my grandmother was banking when you know she she was alive uh she always was always cash 
but now yeah. they're trying to do away with cash. And I think, you know, you know, I always wanted a digital currency like Bitcoin, basically. You know, um, you know, because how can I say? Just another form of currency. You know what I mean? Um, mm. The only thing that fears me about you know all these cryptocurrencies is that the government wants to get their own piece of the pie, and with um, cryptocurrencies, it's not easy for them, the way I see it, for them to get a piece of the pie, you know, because, all right, you can pay taxes and then you've got to be open with them. Not everyone's open with them. And my biggest fear is that basically um, if, if you know, if people aren't open, they're not going to accept it. And that's that's the key part of adoption is is having the government accept it, which is, which is why it's good that, you guys are going through that process with your governments mm. so that, you know, it can solidify because at the end of the day, um, it cannot become mainstream unless, you know, the governments accept it, right? Yeah, I, I, I think I would, I would temper that a little bit. Mm. Um, the, 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 the real point about cryptocurrency is that, in fact, governments – regulators, whatever you want to call it, um, mm. uh, fear that by allowing people to use cryptocurrency, they will lose control of the monetary aggregates and so mm. on. And to a certain extent, that's true. But at the same time, in my view, anyway, it, it adds to the ability of uh, people to be able to operate and yeah. to, um, you know, make lives better mm. for themselves, for others, whatever. Uh, you know, the banks all hate cryptocurrency, but I tell you what, they're yeah. all busy using blockchain. <laughs> and the reason they're all busy using blockchain is because it saves them fortunes. Yeah, that's uh, right. You know, I mean, I, I, I was looking at something the other day and um, uh, the, the, there is an estimate that um, uh, good old JP Morgan, who, yeah. uh, you know, famously have said, oh, we're having nothing to do with it. Yeah. They're actually the biggest traders of Bitcoin and uh, uh, Ether and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, Guess why? Because they're making money out of it. You know, I mean, let's <laughs> I not that, let's yeah. not be let's not be precious about all this. Yeah. The whole point about being involved in anything is to come out of it better off than you started. Yeah, I get that. And yeah. um, uh, you know, I think that I think that's a very important point. And I, I, I mean, I, one of the other th questions again that was asked yesterday it was actually it was a very interesting discussion we had yesterday mm. or or talk that I gave and the questions were <laughs> they were all they were all actually quite pointed and they, they were yeah. all financial people so they knew yeah. what, you know what the, what they were actually after mm. um, but one of the questions was you know what happens if for example uh, you know we've got the the, the digital rim nimby we've got the or one or whatever you want to call it mm. uh, we've got the you know the US Treasury might issue a digital Dollar, dollar and so on is that not going to blow every other cryptocurrency off the face of the earth and the short answer is no it's not mm. uh that you know people hold cryptocurrencies for a whole range of reasons yeah. other than just wanting to trade between themselves and yeah. so on and and of course the the one thing everybody needs to remember is that uh, that uh, digital currency or the, the bitcoin in particular grew out of the disaster that was 2008, 2009, mm. where, you know, banks were going bust ten a penny and, uh, uh, you know, even even the great Goldman Sachs had to uh, had to change from being an investment bank to being a, a, a deposit-taking bank in order to get the bailout. Otherwise, yeah. they'd have gone bust. Oh, okay. um, and the, 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 the sort of gr ethos of the whole thing was, hey, we don't want these people as intermediaries because... Mm. A, they can be, you know, the government could have turned around at any time and said, right, all the deposits in the banks, you can't take them out. You've got to leave them. Hmm. Uh, they didn't, but they might have done. Yeah. Um, and the people reacted to that, um, I, you know, in the early days, I think it was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, um, uh, uh, a sort of conscious thing, hmm. but it's one of these things that's in the back of people's minds all the time. Um, and uh, the other thing, actually, about that period is that, you know, there were trillions of dollars and pounds and euros and all the rest of it that were created. Um, and people have always said, oh, well, that means there's going to be inflation. Well, the answer is there wasn't inflation. Mm. 
And there wasn't inflation at that time because nobody actually got any of that money. The yeah. money all went to the banks <laughs> uh, to fill the enormous holes that they yeah. created, that they had created by their greed and, and one thing or another. And, um, you know, so therefore there wasn't inflation. Now, yeah. the, compare that with the present day mm. where there's even more trillions and billions and all the rest of it are being created all, all over the world. Um, I mean, economies, I mean, I just just read a thing there. They reckon that the UK economy will be down 12 percent just in November. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that's we're going. We're back to the 2000s for, in terms of growth and all the rest of it. Yeah. And what, what that really means is that there's lots and lots and lots of money that's being pumped into the economy. Mm. But this time round, it's not going to the banks. It's going to individuals and companies. Yeah. And that is where we get the classic economics thing of, uh, you know, too much money chasing too few goods. And I mean, I, yeah. I, I funnily enough, I mean, we were, I was having a, a talk with somebody um, just at the weekend. We were talking about, uh, you know, we were doing some shopping and so on. And I thought to myself, God, that's, you know, quite a bit more than I paid last week sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's happening already, and that, that you know there's there's certain items that are disappearing, not only toilet rolls. <laughs> um, uh, there's various other things that just aren't there anymore yeah. or are not in short supply. Um, and um, you know it's it's a different it's a different setup, and I, I strongly believe we're going to be in for a period. We're not at the moment, but we are going to be in for a period of quite strong inflation. Yeah. Um, and that argues very strongly for having some kind of um you know stable in the sense of not inflating mm. uh monetary system and, th and that is cryptocurrency it's as simple as that well you know I, I was seen on the internet the other day someone was comparing their their shopping bills from what they were purchasing one year ago to this time round um because you know we've gone through you know the government pumping money to in sure. other people to support them because we went like I'm in Melbourne, so we had a quite aggressive lockdown. I don't know if you would have seen it on yeah, the yeah. news. So yeah, yeah. So um, you know, and yeah, like the shopping went up, you know. And I was like, you know, that that's like I didn't notice it as much, but other people did that do the same regular shop week in week yeah. out, mm -hmm. you know. And and it's it's scary because like, you know, if we keep putting money into circulation, the value of the money becomes worthless is that right absolutely well i mean classic economics uh, basically says um, you know if you if you if you start out with uh, well that's i read a nice thing the other day every dollar printed mm. devalues the value of every other dollar yeah uh, and obviously that applies to all currencies mm. uh, and and the answer is yes i mean you know you think about it if the the current stock of dollars uh, or whatever is 15 trillion let's just mm. use that as a figure i've no idea what the figure is i don't think anybody does actually um uh, it's 15 trillion and you have a million dollars you know mm. that that's something but, or even one dollar yeah but the point is if if they suddenly turn around and say hey we need another five trillion dollars to keep this economy alive mm. uh you've only got one dollar in 20 trillion and that's a, that's effectively a 33 and a third percent devaluation well, um one of the really nice things is that uh, the way Bitcoin uh, operates or, or works is that the you, the miners, who are the people who create the coin, mm. um, they um, they they earn a reward based yeah. on what they do and so on. And up until uh, May of this year, they were earning uh, twelve and a half Bitcoin per block. Yeah. Now that's now fallen, and and in May it fell to six point two five Bitcoin yeah. per block. Now one of the things I really like is that it's going to take till twenty one forty. In other words, one hundred and twenty years for them to actually run out of to get up to the twenty one million Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, and and actually that's a good point. You're if the, you know if you've got a Bitcoin, you're only ever going to have one Bitcoin yeah. out of twenty one million. You're never going to have you know one Bitcoin in seventy five million Bitcoin because it isn't going to happen. Yeah. Um, but if you look at how much gold is created, or I shouldn't say created, is dug up every year. <laughs> yeah. It's about two and a half percent, roughly, of the uh, of the total that's ever been dug, as mm. it were. Um, so you could you can uh, you can call that gold inflation. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, forget the price. Forget the actual price. I'm only talking about volume here. Yeah. Um, now, actually, Bitcoin's inflation is only about one and a half percent. So even as we speak, um, Bitcoin's inflationary potential um, has dropped even more than it was. Mm. Uh, you know, cryptocurrencies are, are marginally deflationary, as we all know. Yeah. Um, but here is an actual tangible example of why it's inflationary. Yeah. Uh, a deflationary, I should say. And, you know, that's that's only against gold. And people are always saying, oh, gold, you know, that's the final hedge and all the rest of it. And <laughs> yeah. to a certain extent, that's true. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, you try lugging around two or three kilos of gold for a week and see how you feel about it. Whereas, you, you know, you've got your phone and you can do what you like with your phone and the Bitcoin and all the rest of it. You know, yeah. it's, it's, there's a difference. There yeah. really is. <laughs> I was having this sort of this same conversation last week, um, talking to someone, you know, because there were, you know, the whole conspiracy theory with the elite and, you know, control. And they were like, you know, I'll just go back to gold. And I'm, I was, it was a lady that I was talking to. And I was like, yeah, you try carrying gold around in your handbag and you'll see how you go. Because I was trying to tell her, you got to get onto this cryptocurrency thing. Because um, yeah. what draws me to cryptocurrency is that it's, you know, the whole, um, it's deflationary, I think, compared mm. to money, which money is continually pressed, um, which basically yeah. gets diluted um, mm. in value. And, but also the burning aspect of it, you know. I heard there was a – even though the, you know, you pay your fee, that goes to the miners, a small portion of what you pay in fees also gets burnt. So mm. the, the biggest draw to it all is scarcity. Now, I guess we can't all hold on to money forever. So um, eventually we're going to have to spend some of it. But the longer I guess you hold on to it, the, the more the value increases, especially when um, – more and more people start to adopt it. You know, I think the term they were using is, um, you know, it goes mainstream. You know, your mm. retail investors, that's the term, um, get more involved in it, you know, once it becomes more acceptable, which then ties back to like before the importance of, you know, getting these government approvals, you know. So um, that's what really drew me is just the fact that, you know, it's, you know, like you said before, there's only 21 million. Was it 21 million? 20 and a half, 21 and well, a half the, million? There's 20, 21 million. Uh, well, at the moment, there's about 18.6 million has yeah. actually been mined. Yeah. Uh, so there's only like, you know, two and a half million left to go yeah. to the whole thing is done. Yeah. So at the moment, we're on 6.25 uh, Bitcoin per block. Mm. And in another uh, three and a half years' time, that's going to fall to three point one two five. Yeah. And then that that another four years after that will fall to half that again. So I mean that that you know that is quite a deflationary aspect. My my thought, my question to you is, how do you reckon? How do you think the ecosystem will manage with the whole mining process? Um, because you know electricity doesn't go down in price; it goes up. You know what I mean? And the whole fact that as every four years goes, um, it gets halved. Do you reckon it'll be sustainable? Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in, with two two answers, really. Yeah. The first is Bitcoin is always going to be uh, handled um, in the, exactly the way that it's doing at the moment, which is mm. proof of work. Yeah. But they are doing various things like the Lightning Network. Now, the Lightning mm. Network... Uh, uh, in case people don't know what that is. Basically, that is where there are people who trade or who, for whatever reason, use Bitcoin themselves for a variety of things, um, and they do that on a regular basis. So mm. I could say to you, okay, we are doing some kind of business whereby I'm paying you in Bitcoin or you're paying me in Bitcoin, uh, and it's costing me, and I'm making this up, $5 every transaction. Yeah. And that obviously is like, you know, a transaction. Just let's say it's a transaction every day. Let's just yeah. do that. So uh, I can say we will we will operate a lightning network. Uh, we will operate a system whereby um, we do a, effectively a side chain. And what the side chain does is it says it builds up the balances between you and me over a period of time. So mm. once a month, if we've done 30 or 40 transactions uh, between us, <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> we can um, we can reconcile that. We can mm. say, okay, I owe you 
you know, 0.001 of a Bitcoin over all those transactions. Mm. And we can then put that onto the main net, what they call the main net, the main blockchain. Yeah. And that, what that does is that takes away 30 odd transactions and mm. makes it just one. So A, you don't have to pay $5 times 30, which is $150, you pay one $5. Yeah. And that's a big step. And also the same thing with using the electricity. Mm. Now, there, there is a variety of different uh, things that, that will impact on that as time goes on. I mean, I was hearing, for example, about when the rains come in northern China, all the miners move to north China because the electricity is for nothing. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that will happen there. But the second half of that is, and and this is where uh, you know we again we're because we had the option to migrate. Hmm. Um, we are we were uh, on a a Bitcoin uh, counterparty protocol. Yeah. Uh, what we call V2 version two, mm. um, and we've now moved to an Ethereum-based yeah. protocol, uh, ERC20, which is probably the most accepted uh, protocol in the world, I would think, for cryptocurrencies nowadays. Yeah. Um, a, a, the transaction costs are much lower. It's much quicker. Uh, it doesn't use, even at this stage, it doesn't use anything like the electricity uh, and resources that uh, Bitcoin does. Uh, even allowing for the difference in volume and one thing or another. Mm. But uh, Ethereum is uh, going to be moving to a proof-of-stake yeah. system. And that will, you know, transform, A, the cost of a transaction, mm. uh, and B, it will also transform the resources because it's it, basically you're using something that's already in existence as a, um, as a payment, if you like, for yeah. lack of a better expression. Um, and that that was one of the one of the reasons or one of the uh, background reasons why we decided to move across to the Ethereum system. Um, and, it, you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but, um, mm. you know, over the next couple of years, we'll see that happening, I think. Yeah. Um, in fact, we at Scott Coin are already operating as, as effectively a side chain for uh, we have a <clears throat> we have a. A promotion running at the moment for the Scottish professional football leagues, yeah. Uh, whereby, uh, if you're a, a season ticket holder, you can get given some Scott coin, and the, some of the clubs are, are going to be doing a, a system whereby they will take the Scott coin uh, as a, a, a discount for their own goods, for their yeah. merchandise, and so on. Uh, and we're go we're going to be operating that on a on a separate side chain. Purely and simply from the cost point of view. I mean, if you've got 20,000 people, uh, you know, <laughs> busily swapping <laughs> coin all over the place, that's yeah. going to be a lot of transaction costs. But yeah. in fact, if we aggregate them and put them into um, a side chain, we can handle the whole thing for virtually nothing. And yeah. then once a week, once a month, we do one transaction and the whole lot gets done. So it's, it's a very simple process. It doesn't alter in any way what's what's happening. So you guys have really been doing your research there trying to make it as cost effective as possible um absolutely for yeah so um absolutely what um i was i was really curious about um you know when you're trying to get into adoption with a lot of people and your everyday mum and dad do you think there'll be any challenges you know around the whole scott coin um being on the ethereum you know erc20 chain because Every time, like for the everyday normal person, right, you, they would think that, you know, transferring money would be as simple as here's you, all right, fair enough, you give me your QR code, I send you 20 Scott coin, you get that. But it's not really as simple as that. It's like you've got to also hold Ethereum. So essentially people have really got to be have a good understanding of how the Ethereum blockchain works alongside or how block, uh, Scott Coin works alongside the Ethereum blockchain. Do you think it's going to be easy to get through some of these? Do, do you see them as challenges? Um, well, they are obviously challenges, and, and, the, and the challenge is, in fact, uh, a much wider challenge. The, the, the wider challenge is not to get people to adopt Scott Coin, although that's great. Mm. The challenge is to get people to adopt cryptocurrency. Mm. Uh, and, in fact, that's what the Scott Coin Project CIC's job is. It's mm. to... 
uh, increased knowledge around Scotland and elsewhere, of course. Mm. Uh, I mean, incidentally, you're not the only person in Australia that owns Scott Coin. We have about 10 or 12 people in Australia that actually have Scott Coin. Yeah. Um, uh, I, you know, it's an important thing to get people to, uh, to adopt it. Mm. Now, the one thing I would say about that is, you know, you're saying about, oh, you need to understand this or understand that. In a sense, they don't. I mean, I have no idea how a telephone works or a mobile phone. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't tell you what happens. Yeah. I know it's, you know, you, whatever. Um, but, I mean, the same thing really applies to cryptocurrencies. You don't actually need to know how it works. Mm. You just need to know, hey, if I do this with my QR code, uh, this will happen. Mm. Um, and, and, and people actually are really quite good at, um, uh, you know, if you explain a process to them, I mean, that, this is one of the things doing this migration has been quite an interesting exercise on its own. Mm. Um, there are one or two, what I would describe as foibles of, uh, Ethereum wallets, mm. um, which some of them instantaneously recognize an ERC 20 mm. others. You have to. Uh, actually what they call add token, which requires a little bit of effort and one thing or another. Um, and and none of it is actually, that. It's quite a lot of that isn't intuitive. It's something that you've got to find out about and then do. Um, and we've we've made videos about all this sort of thing just to help people with it. And, yeah. it, and it's very interesting because people, uh, <coughs> people quite often um, have come back and said, oh, I can't, I can't see my coin. Where is my coin? Mm. And we we show them that it's in the wallet because we can do that with EtherScan, mm. and then we say you may have to add token. Now the other, the other slight foible about it all is that not all platforms react in the same way. So, for example, um, uh, some of the to some of the wallets instantaneously recognise all ERC twenty tokens, yeah. others don't. But of the ones that don't different i mean if you've got an iphone or you've got an android phone or you've got a i don't know some other kind of phone <laughs> yeah. uh doesn't necessarily operate in exactly the same way so there's mm. there's changes there but what's really interesting to me anyway is there hasn't been one person who's come back to me having watched the little videos we've done and said oh i can't do it um uh, you <laughs> I, I will actually tell you a little story. Yeah. Somebody phoned, uh, actually sent me an email. So I can't, I can't see my new coin. And I said, Oh, and I gave him a spiel about all this. And he said, are they not supposed to be in my bank account? <laughs> and I, 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 I really didn't know what to say about that. I just thought, oh, my God, this guy has no idea what yeah. he's doing at all. Um, uh, anyway, so I explained to him that in fact it wouldn't be in there; it would be in his wallet that he yeah. had, and that this was the wallet that he'd created in one thing or another. And he said, "Oh, he said, uh, he said, oh, that's good. He said, that's good. It's it's separate from the banks." I said, <laughs> "Yes." He said, "Oh, that's fantastic, <laughs> jolly good." And he uh, went off and he did whatever he was supposed to do. But yeah. is it is that that is actually perhaps the biggest problem is to get people to realise um, that. Uh, uh, that, that that it's not your bank account; it's a completely mm. separate yeah. system. Um, and and I would have said most people probably do get that, but it, 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 you know, it, it it is something that you just have to bear in mind that mm. it's uh, you know you're dealing with money, and people therefore think bank. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I think that is one of the challenges: is understanding how the wallet system works. And once mm. people sort of get through that, then it gets a bit easier. Um, I know for myself, um, sometimes I use Trust Wallet and I set it up when you sent me the coin, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? And yeah, I just had mm. to put the contract address in, you know, add token, mm. like you say, and everything just showed up there, easy as pie. Yeah. So yeah. I've been quite impressed, you know, like, yeah, that side of the system. Just the, the only drawback is like every time I want to send it, I need to always have Ethereum. So Will will Scott Coin ever go on its own blockchain so it doesn't have anything to do with that? Well, this is this is part and parcel of the side chain. Mm. Um, the, the, there was a, an initial discussion whereby we would um, operate effectively entirely with a side chain. Mm. Uh, now the problem with that is you have to have your own nodes. You have to have your own computer network. Uh, or, or at least a computer network that you can tap into. Yeah. And one of the 
reasons that we went with the the way we have is that if you if you say okay we're going to have our own system okay uh, neil you can be one of the nodes i can be one of the nodes mm. jimmy down the road can be one of the nodes and somebody else can be one of those now what happens if something happens to you or to three or four out of half a dozen people yeah. that are doing this uh you don't have longevity you don't have continuity yeah. you know in in 20 years time we'll all be dead you need another lot of people and you, you might not have people that want to do it Mm. Now, the great thing about being on one of the major blockchains, Bitcoin as well, uh, is that there are lots and lots and lots and lots of people who are doing it. It's never mm. going to die. Yeah. And therefore, if you use that as the basis of your um, of your system, you have got longevity. You have got security because those blockchains are never going to get hacked. Um, yeah. I will... I will say that, uh, you know, people misunderstand about hacking. They think it's the bit, the blockchain that gets hacked. It's not. It's the exchanges that get hacked yeah. or people's, you know, do something stupid. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's never the blockchain itself. The blockchain is inviolate. Yeah, no. And that being the case, as I say, we shied away from doing our own our own thing. We didn't we didn't want to be beholden to. You know, I, I mean, I'm I'm pretty ancient already. In another twenty years' time, I'll either be dead or really ancient. <laughs> um, I didn't want I didn't want to be having to rush around and get uh, you know, another twenty people to say, "Hey, you've got to come and help us with this," and they're going to mm. go, "Why?" You know, no, I couldn't be bothered. Anyway, the point is that that um, Ethereum is here to stay. We're on the Ethereum system. Mm. The amount you pay is peanuts. It's nothing mm. really in terms yeah. of what you're doing. Um, and you, you know, you know, it's secure, you know, it works, it's great. And as I say, we can use the, uh, the side chain we've created or, uh, for, uh, for, you know, if you want to do, uh, free transactions, it's there to do it. It's as yeah. simple as that. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, and that doesn't, and again, that doesn't require anyone to actually do it. It's all actually part and parcel of how the Ethereum blockchain works. Yeah. So it's, it's a win-win from our point of view so yeah I, I get that you're sort of basically using a, an established platform that has a solid foundation mm. so yeah. that in the future you don't have to worry about these little little things that may come up along the way because you pretty much already set everything up now hello yeah uh, can you, you hear me you disappeared there for a second oh how about now you got me that's okay now no, fine now, yeah. <laughs> so basically yeah you've got a solid foundation that's basically set up you know, you've done pretty much most of your groundwork now, setting up the smart contracts of it. Um, so pretty much you can let it grow in its own way, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Just going back to one of the points you made about uh, understanding how the, the, you know, Ethereum works and so on. Mm. Uh, one of the things we found even when we were doing V2 was that um, if, you know, I, I would say to somebody, you know, they would do something for us and I would say, well, I'll give you some, some Scott coin. Mm. Um, and they would say, oh, that's very kind. You know, what do I need to do? So, well, you need to download a wallet. Yeah. Now, what we've found is that people who have been, let's say, nervous or unsure or whatever about crypto, the minute they've downloaded the wallet and they suddenly see the Scott coin appearing in their wallet, they understand how it all works. They get it. They 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 realize this is a, a you know a new frontier, as it were. Yeah. And I mean, not one single person who's done that has ever turned around and said, "Oh, I don't get that," or "I don't understand," or "I don't like it," or whatever. Everyone mm. has always gone, "Hey, yeah, no, God, that was easy. Yeah, great, super duper." Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we in fact, <laughs> and for, it was, in fact, one of the things we were going to do, we were going to run a series of YouTube ads. Mm. Um, uh, it, before all this COVID thing happened, mm. whereby people were going to do, uh, a, 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 it would just be an actor like a talking head, yeah. um, saying, uh, uh, the one I particularly liked was, uh, uh, you know, the first time you went to a, um, a, uh, an outdoor um, gig, yeah. you know, and how you were excited and you were a bit nervous and you were a bit this and that, the next thing. And then at the end of it, I mean, it's a bit corny, really, but at the end of it, they, the person says, well, you know, it was a bit like that when I was first downloading a Scott coin wallet. I was a bit nervous about it. But, hey, you know, I did it and it was great. And it was, you know, blah, 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 blah. And there's all there was a, we had three or four different scenarios. Uh, there was one about uh, somebody's first kiss and how they were a bit nervous about it and all the rest of it. But then yeah. it all happened. Oh, I mean, it was actually some of them were really nice. Oh, what? Um, 
but but we couldn't we couldn't actually record them we had all the we had the people set up we had mm. the the uh, the script set up we had everything organized and then it all blew up uh. but we may do them yet because they're, they're really nice little stories some of them it's really good there's nothing wrong with corniness like you know if it's know. Enter- in, if it's the, if there's a com- if it's entertaining or there's a comedic value it also works i know there's this loan loan company that give you know people mm. quick you know one minute loans type of thing i think the ads i've seen the ads run in the uk and i've seen them run in australia where i think it's like a squirrel or a skunk or something like that do you know the the ad i'm talking about i know yeah i know what you mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'll tell you what like yeah, yeah no, and every time i see it i watch it you know i've mm. noticed a few ads in australia if there's that entertainment value to it you'll keep the viewer more engaged run it rather than running the normal boring ad where it's you know, just trying to throw things at you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I, in fact, actually, funnily enough, um, the one of the things I always think about is that you know, TV programs in particular, mm. uh, if they have what I would describe as uh, as a bit of amusement in them, yeah. um, you know, detective stories or whatever it might be, mm. uh, they're much longer lived than the ones that are just you know hitting you over the head every two seconds with you know death and destruction <laughs> well, they say they um, run you know, a few a few you know uh, people say about you know love makes the world, money makes the world go around love makes the world go around but actually amusement kind of makes the world go around really That's true. I, I i'm a i i, I unfortunately i have a, a a very low threshold of amusement and uh, as a result of that you'll suddenly find me bursting into hysterical laughter at <laughs> odd times for no apparent reason but it's just something i've seen or something that's happened and it just makes me laugh and that's all i can do well these days people have a lot shorter attention span so mm-hmm. if you can keep them engaged for a, a short period of time and deliver your message at the same time. I guess it's a job well done at the end of the day, if you mm. know what I mean. Mm. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I love the fact that people uh, uh, can get enjoyment out of what they're doing. I mean, I think that's really – I mean, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, what on earth are you doing it for, you know? Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. So that's um, it. how you, – I know you, you've touched on this. You've gotten the Scot- Scottish Football League involved with Scott Coyne. Are you guys, and you've gotten involved with some charities, are you looking to get, like, you know, everyday trade service people involved in accepting Scott Coin and, you know, shopkeepers and stuff like that? Yeah, well, I think <clears throat> I think there's two things. I'm, I, 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 I've never, despite what people seem to think, I've never thought that, you know, Scott Coin's going to get used for cups of coffee and stuff. I just mm. don't, I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, I can very readily see it being used for larger items, no problem at all. Um, and uh, because there's a, there's, there is a point here, if you, if you um, buy something with a credit card or whatever, uh, the person who's taking that credit card pays a fee and it's yeah. you know, one and a half percent or whatever. So if it's, you know, if it's 10 pounds, it'll be 15 pence. It's usually it'll be more than that because they don't charge as little as that. It's about 35 pence. Yeah. But if it's a hundred pounds, it becomes one pound 50. Yeah. And if it's a thousand pounds, it becomes 15 pounds. Yeah. Uh, and that is a cost to the seller. Mm. Now, if, if, if I was buying something with Scott coin, <clears throat> if it was a you know something or other it might be let, let's just call it even let's call it a pound it doesn't really matter yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say that the cost is a pound mm. um but that pound is the same whether the, the what you're buying is one pound ten pounds a hundred pounds a thousand pounds or a million pounds mm. and that represents a big plus to the person who's selling it so there's a there's yeah. a there's a very good reason for taking cryptocurrencies mm. for larger items um uh, and, and and to answer your question properly, the answer is yes. We are going to be having people who will accept Scott Coin, uh, the, the you know the new ERC twenty token uh, for various things. I mean, the one I particularly like is we have somebody who makes bespoke furniture, yeah. who said he's very happy to accept Scott Coin, um, and you know I think that's great. I mean, his his things sell for several hundred pounds, so several hundred pounds in Scott Coin. If he's taking a credit card, he's he's paying you know, 20 quid or something for yeah. to get his card cleared. Um, and with Scott Coyne, he'll pay a pound. So, he's, he's, he, you know, it's worth his while to do it. Yeah. Um, so uh, the answer is yes, there will be. Yeah. 
Mm. Um, it's uh, we, we've deliberately not done uh, done that with the V2 version, with yeah. the Bitcoin version, because if we'd done that, we'd then just have to change everybody over, which frankly is you know not the easiest of things to do. Uh, um, so we've we've stuck with waiting until now when we have the new token, yeah. uh, which is very easy to use it's uh, very cheap to use it's very quick to use i mean mm. bitcoin i mean you uh, I, I, there was something the other day i was waiting for a, a bitcoin transaction and it took even although i'd done it priority high and one thing or another it took about half a day wow you yeah. know yeah, I get even, that, yeah. At the, even at the very worst i've seen uh, when i mean I, the worst ethereum one i've seen is about i don't know two minutes Oh, wow. You know, so so that you know that's and that's not that's that's just using an average price. I mean, you can do it quicker if you use a high high volume. I mean, yeah. you, the difference between a high and a low is, you know, not a lot. It might only be twenty cents. So yeah. I mean, if you if you <laughs> if you're really worried about the twenty cents, you can wait your couple of minutes. And if yeah. you're not bothered, yeah. you just pay the higher price. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's but it, you know there is that is again that's a significant reason why we chose uh, Ethereum over Bitcoin yeah. uh, blockchains. Um, so yeah, yeah, there will be there will be people who are going to accept it, and uh, and of course one of the the other things is, uh, for example, particularly we're in fact we're anybody who wants to, if they're in Australia or anyone else around wants to to get a uh, an onboarding pack from us, please get in touch, and we'll be delighted to to get them sorted. So what is this? In, what's that onboarding pack uh, consist of or involved? Well, basically speaking, it, it's just a description and so on of, of what they need to do. You know, it'll be a QR code. It'll be uh, various other things. If it's a it's a shop, they'll get a sticker to stick on the window. Um, oh. There's, you know, obviously help desk yeah. and all that specifically for people who are uh, going to, um, you know, take Scott coin in a, in a retail environment. And yeah. in fact, this comes back to one of your questions you said about expanding the, the, the core number of people. And the short yeah. answer is as we move towards the IEO, we will be, there'll be a, a full-time PR, uh, the people we have at the moment are part-time will be a full-time PR yeah. set up. Uh, there'll be a full-time, um, customer service set up. Um, there'll be a full-time, um, uh, you know, retail offering, as it were. There'll be a variety of different people that are involved uh, as we go forward. And, and obviously that all has to be paid for, uh, yeah. and it will be, and that's the way it works. So, yeah, you guys really have that road plan to really make it, basically take it to the big leagues, yeah? and um, Yeah, have absolutely. It, have it something that's trading around the world, is that right? Not just in that's Scotland? That's the idea, yeah. I mean, I think, I think there's, there's actually... Um, you know, I was talking earlier on about the U.S. dollar uh, one and the um, uh, the Chinese one, and so on. I mean, I I, th I think that in fact, in in all probability, mm. there is going to be, uh, you know, there'll be there will be cryptocurrencies that are used worldwide. I mean, there's nothing to stop it. There's no. Yeah. There's no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no border. You know, I, I always say, you know, Scott coin doesn't stop at Hadrian's wall. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. But the point is that in fact, uh, in terms of local areas, whether it be China, whether it be Scotland, whether it be Catalonia, whether it be Ireland, whether it be Iceland, whether it be the U S whatever, um, uh, you know, they all have each place has its own fiat currency. Mm. Why should it not have its own cryptocurrency? And, and yeah. in fact, people people might be more willing to adopt it if it is their own. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we we certainly believe that in terms of Scotland, people. Um, I mean, obviously, people have Ethereum and Bitcoin and one thing or another, but we found that people are very happy with Scott coin. Yeah, well, I, I reckon as soon as um, like as you get involved in more and more shops and retail and stuff like this, um, local acceptance will be much easier and. Mm. people will be more open to the idea of it. Do you know what I mean? Because if they're going to accept it from someone, at least they know they've got somewhere where they can spend it. Do you know what I mean? Mm, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, well, we already have, we already have a, 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 a our own website, market, market.scottcoinproject.com, okay. where you can buy, uh, admittedly, not very interesting things. <laughs> um, but the, you know, we, we've asked people if they want to, a bit like eBay. If you want to get rid of something that you've got, get in touch with us. We'll put it up there for you. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, 
and you know it, it's a bit like a car boot sale you know yeah. that's great what, what to do yeah do you guys sell merchandise on there like you know t-shirts yeah yeah, caps, yeah. There's, i think that the mugs. moment there's about um uh there's about 30 odd things there Mm. Um, we, we, I mean, again, uh, you know, uh, the, one of the great things I'm always on about is you need bodies, you need people to do things. Yeah. And, uh, right at the very beginning when we got involved, there was somebody who wanted to actually do that. They wanted to handle that themselves and do it and, you know, what have you. Unfortunately, they couldn't do it because the various things happened mm. and therefore it was sort of in limbo. Yeah. Um, we've only just really created it in the last few months and we are actively looking for someone to come along and say, yeah, I'll handle that for you and they'll promote it themselves and they'll do it and they'll, and guess what? They'll take a little bit off the top for themselves, but Hey, that's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, but we have, we, we need to find somebody to do that. And that's again, one of the things that we're involved in trying to do at the moment. Look, nothing good comes easy in life and there'll always be challenges <laughs> along the way. Sure. <laughs> but, um, look, I really do hope you guys get there with that, you know, because it's it's That's important, kind. you know, um, getting people to trade, whether it's in Scott Coin or other cryptocurrencies, you know, it takes time. Like I remember when the first, you know, the internet first came about and you could pay your bills online, a lot of people were skeptic about it, you know. My mum and yeah. dad would never have paid their bills through the internet, but... 20 years on and it's now the norm so you know and with cryptocurrency it's still in the early stages so as time goes on and yeah it grows you know it becomes everywhere you know i think the hardest thing was um two years ago when was it two years ago when um i think it was the end of 2017 when bit bitcoin was like at 24,000 australian i can't remember what it was us um but then all the media just slammed it really bad. Um, and it's I think it's it's just the people out there that control the media didn't they have mm. didn't have their hands in the pie at the time and they wanted to have their hands in the pie and you know it's come down, they've had their opportunity now because I heard in somewhere it was like this is the first time in history where the little man has been able to get ahead of the big man. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. No, that's true. I, I, I mean, I think there's, uh, the, the, uh, well, again, there's, you know, I, 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 the one thing actually I remember saying right at the beginning when we started, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Yeah. And people have regarded uh, cryptocurrencies as a get-rich-quick scheme. And, and it's absolutely right. If you bought, uh, well, if you even bought Bitcoin in the early part of this year at $4,000, it's now, or US dollars, it's now sitting around 30500 If you bought it then, you've done absolutely right. You've done yeah. great. However, if you bought it at $20,000, uh, you ain't doing quite so well. But one of the more interesting things about that is that actually every week that goes by, mm. uh, Bitcoin in terms of local currencies mm. uh, hits a new all-time high. For, I mm. mean, just to give you one example, Against the Turkish lira, um, if you'd bought Bitcoin even at the twenty thousand, or in your case the twenty four thousand mm. US uh, Australian dollars, um, you would have made a profit in the local currency. And yeah. I, th I think there's now something like uh, seventy five out of one hundred and fifty world currencies um, that it's actually made a profit. So oh, wow. there's there's a, a it's you know to say oh it's fallen etc is not is is true if you take dollars if you mm. take pounds if you take euros but if you take Turkish lira and I can't remember what all the other ones are but there's about seventy of them um, you've actually done better than you I mean the, you know the Venezuelan cruise or whatever it was yeah. I mean you you've, you've <laughs> made massive amounts more money yeah, yeah. Uh, you know but uh, um, but uh, you know it's so it's 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 not a um, the great thing about currencies and so on is it's not a it's not a f we, when we had the Bretton Woods thing and everything mm. was set that was fine um, but it's all changed it's all different everything's yeah. moving all the time there's trillions traded every day uh, and you know you, you you have to be aware of that happening. yeah well I always thought it's like you said it's not a quick get quick rich scheme it's it's something that's going to be, we hope to be sustainable for the future, mm. you know, but it, I like to call it a long con or a long game, you know what I mean? Because mm. you get in it now, you know, what we're expecting it to be in the future is probably like 10 to 20 years away before it actually yeah. gets to where we want it to be, where 
you know. And it does meet its purpose, like you were saying, with Venezuela and Turkish, you know. Mm. That's why these currencies were designed. Um, I think mm. that's what, you know, the Satoshi Nakamoto was talking about, was these type of countries where the countries didn't have a good grip on managing their money well. And in the end, unfortunately, the people of the country would lose out. So having mm. somewhere to put your money away where it didn't have such, you know, in fluctuation or, you know, the mm. fact that it could go down due to printing more money, you know, is mm. a good thing, you know. And, um, yeah, no, nah, yeah, I guess it's it's doing its thing, you know what I mean? And, it, mm. you, know, you know, the one thing I just wonder is, um, yeah, it comes back to will when will people – because, like, at the end of the day, we trade in the US dollar basically, you know. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. When will – the benefits outweigh of cryptocurrency outweigh the USD that the whole world decides to trade on it. I know for a fact that um, I think it was Russia and China have already been putting large amounts of money um, into Bitcoin because in case of, uh, was it trade sanctions and stuff like that, when mm. countries mm. can't use the US dollar to be able to trade, those countries will then start trading in Bitcoin. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, well, it, it, that obviously is a hedge, and it's a governmental thing. That particular one, but the, the the other thing to look at is on a on a micro level as opposed to a macro level. Mm. Um, if if you take the value of all cryptocurrencies at the moment, it's mm. around about one and a half percent of world assets. Yeah. Roundabout, give or take. Mm. Uh, they're obviously very big numbers. But, I mean, what that says is that uh, cryptocurrencies are, in fact, a, a valid asset class. Yeah. Um, you know, 1.5%, um, you know, I wouldn't think wine is anything like that. I wouldn't think whiskey is anything like that. Mm. I wouldn't think, uh, you know, uh, vintage cars or anything like that. There's lots of different asset classes that are much smaller than cryptocurrency. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, there, the, if 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 it is true that one and a half percent is is uh, what cryptos are in terms of world assets, then for anyone with any kind of um, strategy in terms of mm. investment and their you know wealth preservation, never mm. mind creation, um, they need to have some. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And in fact, I read a thing recently which I thought was quite nice. If you had bought. Um, uh, Bitcoin, uh, just one percent of your assets into Bitcoin uh, at any point in the last ten years, even at the very, very top, mm. uh, you would uh, basically still have uh, uh, a net gain, and your mm. asset value would you, the assets that you held would have held value against inflation, basically. Oh, and wow. that you know that's that's you know serious. That's really good. That's mm. really good. Yeah. Um, I always, you know, like I always want people to understand, you know, you know, these cryptocurrencies, they're socially driven. And I think that's what a lot of people lack to see, you know, because mm. um, I was listening to a YouTuber the other day and basically every time, it, you know, there's a four year cycle basically and it every mm. time the, the four years comes up, it's at its peak and then everyone just sells out or, you know, mm. cashes some in causes the price to drop and then it just grows back up again, you know. So mm. it's one of the things like, yeah, I wish I fully understood it so I could strategize, but I think that's really key, you know. And it's one of those things that if you want to get rich off it or make, you know, like you say, a net profit, you've got to really understand those things, you know what mm. I mean? Yeah, it's the it's the it's the way. What's the right word I'm looking for? It's the waves of uh, investment and, and mm. the way money works and the way stocks and shares work and everything else it's all it's all rolled into one i mean mm. it, it's a um most people of course it doesn't matter because they haven't got any assets worth protecting anyway <laughs> but if you've got if you even if you all you did was to buy you know um and uh, some people maybe wouldn't even be able to do that but i mean just let's say buy a hundred uh pounds worth or dollars worth or whatever of uh of Bitcoin and just leave it. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, I met someone the other day who <laughs> said he, he had uh, uh, the idea to give everyone in the world 0.1 of a Bitcoin. And I said, actually, you can't do that because there's only ever going to be 21 million. That would be only <laughs> 210 million people. Yeah, yeah. And he said, oh, he said, uh, yeah, no, I'd forgotten that. <laughs> and then he said, well, 0.01. I said, well, you're up to two 
two billion. Uh, mm. That's um, a bit better, but you still can't do that, you know. And so it's 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 quite an interesting aspect. The other bit I love about Bitcoin is twenty one million Bitcoin maximum in another hundred years or so. Yeah. Um, there's actually thirty five million millionaires. Oh, Not wow. all the millionaires can have a Bitcoin. Yeah, How about yeah. that? Yeah, no. <laughs> Even though you're a millionaire, you can't have one. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a, the interesting thing. When it gets to the end game, I heard somewhere it's just going to be like one Bitcoin and everyone's just going to be really dealing in Satoshis, if you know what I mean. Yeah, of course, yeah. And course. I think, you know, that's the whole depreciating thing about, you know, which makes Bitcoin so good, you know, is that mm. scarcity brings value, you know. Mm. Um mm. I don't know if you can just keep mining gold forever, but I'm sure once they're unable to do do that, you know, mining flakes and whatever they do, um, yeah, then gold will be, you know, valued a lot more than I guess what it is now, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm as I think I said earlier on, very old, and I remember when I was about. I don't know, let's just say 25 to 30. Yeah. Um, there was a book that was written talking about how long uh, we had with lots of different things before they ran out. Mm. Um, and uh, part of it was based on the fact that what was being dug up was less than was being used and so on and so on and so on. And that, mm. at that time, uh, they said, well, there's only 11 years left of gold. Mm. Uh, there's, I think there was 14 years left of oil. <laughs> you know, now that was that's fifty years ago, yeah. nearly. Uh, so uh, you know, we're st and we're we're still, you know, uh, there's more there's more oil being found than ever, mm. and you know, there's more gold being found, and ah, you know, what the Doesn't hell? Stop. <laughs> the world is a wonderful place. <laughs> um, I just I've got a question, right? Um, it sort of relates back to the whole adoption with you know the retailers and stuff like that. When they um receive scott coin from uh you know you know normal people like everyday people are they able to trade it back into a currency like a fiat or are they sort of <laughs> pigeonholed to the scott coin and that they've got to find a way to use it well no no um well we we would be very happy if they found a way to use it that's absolutely mm. true but uh, the whole point about doing this ieo which is an initial exchange offering which yeah. is going to be towards the end of next year uh, we hope uh, yeah. we had we had intended that it would be um, maybe the early part of next year, but of course all this COVID thing has ruined everything. Yeah. Really. <laughs> um, but there will be an exchange, and mm. the, it will be able to be traded on the exchange. Oh, okay. um, of course, it remains. You know, day one we know what the price is going to be because we will set it effectively. Yeah. Nobody knows what day two is going to be. So there mm. are, there's, there's a risk from the point of view of, um, and the same applies to Bitcoin. You know, we yeah. know what it is right now. Yeah. Um, but is that going to be the same if you take some today and try and trade it tomorrow? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and, but we, we, uh, so far we've been reasonably successful at keeping the, the price about the same. Mm. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, I have absolutely no doubt that there'll be, uh, people who simply want to sell. There'll be people who decide that it's worth buying. Mm. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a lot of different things that will happen. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, I, I'm I'm a great believer in uh, fate, and it, it's maybe the fact of having uh, uh, this COVID shutdown effectively is uh, going to be that people are much more aware of. Uh, issues so they won't try to get into cash yeah. instantaneously yeah um, and uh, there's two or three people who uh, have been in touch and sort of saying you know how much are they worth and we can tell them that of course mm. uh, and then they say well i'm not i'm not thinking about selling at all uh, and you know explain about the ieo and one thing or another and they say oh no 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 this is uh, you know i'm keeping it for my children or grandchildren or whatever mm. and in fact funnily enough actually one of the 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 big areas of question is you know how do i how do i keep scott coin for my children who are only little at the moment yeah and the answer is well it's no problem you just set up a wallet for them and that's it and you know you do all the different things you need to do to have a, a wallet and uh, which includes the kyc obviously as the yeah. parent you're the person who we look to 
Um, and that's it. It's, it's very simple. And the other thing that's really interesting, actually, mm. is, I mean, it's a very sad story in a way. We had a an elderly gentleman who who was actually very clued up, and mm. he uh, he bought some Scott coin. I mean, a long, long time ago, maybe five, six years ago. Um, and he kept up a kind of correspondence with us over the period. And it was fairly obvious he was, he was ill and one thing or another. Anyway, very sadly, he died. Mm. Um, and um, uh, we, the, the, the people who were handling his estate and so on, got in touch with us and said, you know, we understand he has this and that and the next thing. And, you know, what, what do we do? How do we do it? You know, mm. do we just sell it? Do we whatever? Anyway, we sent them a whole lot of stuff and we explained to them all about it. Mm. And they obviously they they then got the the main beneficiary uh, to get in touch with us, and um, you know we went through the whole thing again, explained it all to them, and instead of I mean if if necessary we would have arranged a sale and so on that would have been no problem. Yeah. Um, uh, but they they actually came back and said no, we want to take them. Now that's that to me that is a real vote of confidence yeah yeah uh and uh i mean the person who is the the main beneficiary is probably in their 50s yeah uh, uh maybe even slightly more um and they decided they wanted to own they knew nothing about scott coin before they mm. may have known a little bit about cryptocurrencies but they certainly didn't know about scott coin um mm. and they decided that they would 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 keep it and yeah. so we you know we arranged the transfer and one thing another for them and so on um and Brilliant, absolutely brilliant from our point of view. Now, that's, that's a really good thing because it shows that people are trying to take that leap of faith or have yeah. some confidence in in the you know yeah. the future of cryptocurrency, I guess. And you yeah. know, if they sell it now, they could miss out in the future type of thing. So, it if knows. you've got it there it already, knows. why not just hold on to it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I, th I think that was. I mean, I mean, I was quite surprised. I mean, I was. I'd actually lined up two or three people to actually, because we don't buy back um, Scott Coin ourselves. We yeah. sell it, but we never buy it back. Mm. But we do have people who are prepared to buy it. Usually it's obviously at a cheaper price, naturally. Yeah. Um, but we we do have people who, you know, leave, as it were, on market orders with us. Yeah. And, and somebody comes along and says, well, I want to sell, you know, whatever, we see what we can do. Um, and it, I mean, that actually that's worked very well for several okay. years. So, um, what that almost leads to the next question I had. Um, just got a couple of questions more, but so you are you guys running your own independent exchange with Scott Coin, or will you be listing on some public exchanges in the future? No, at, at the moment, we have um exchange.scottcoinproject.com, mm. which is simply a if you like, it's an ATM cash machine. You know, you put in cash and we give you Scott Coin. Basically, yeah. that's what it works. That's as simple as that. So, it's not an exchange as such, really. Mm. Um, but we will be going on to uh, um, major exchanges. Um, the current thinking, and you know, as it as ever. Until you get there, you never know. But the yeah. current thinking is that we would use Malta as a base for uh, the IEO because it's – well, there's two reasons. One is that Malta is very well regulated in terms of cryptocurrencies. Mm. Uh, I mean, just to to get to the stage where you can even – uh, publish uh, an IEO document, uh, you've got to go through – I think it's 47 – um, different uh, uh, tests, yeah. for, for lack of a better expression, and and you have to pass all those tests. Mm. I mean, you fail one, you say sorry, no, you can't do it, um, and they check. You know, it's a bit it's a bit like doing the FCA again. They check, you know, who you are and what you're doing and who the advisors are and all the rest of it. And so, you know, people can have confidence in that procedure. They can they can, you know, they know if you've been through that. Uh, uh, Maltese Financial Services Authority mm. uh, system, then you are a good guy. Yeah, um, yeah. And that, that you know, we, we think that, as we said earlier on, we think that's a really important part of this whole process is being seen to be, uh, you know, properly regulated, covering these things properly and so on. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, the, one of the big plus points about, uh, doing that is that you're automatically then on the Maltese crypto exchange. 
and that has a that that is just one exchange um and you know we would uh, we've been looking at uh, coinbase and one thing or another yeah. the one thing we're very against doing is paying money to be listed because we yeah. don't believe that's the right way to do it yeah uh, and that has a few drawbacks but yeah. there's, I mean, there's lots of different possibilities, and 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 you know, uh, the the other thing, you know, you're saying about this is all in its infancy. It, it is. It's all all everything to do with crypto is in its infancy. Yeah. And what we, I mean, when we started this this journey from wanting to change the blockchain we were on or change the system we were on, uh, ERC twenties didn't exist. Yeah. And you know, as time came on, and suddenly ERC twenties appeared. Uh, we realized that this was a something that we could work with. And it's taken us two, three years to get to the point that we were happy with it all and so on and so on. So the same thing may well apply to exchanges. You know, it may well be that it becomes very obvious that this exchange or that exchange is the right one to be on yeah. in the next year. You know, who knows? Um, so we're, we're, at this point, we're not, uh, you know, nailing things to the floor and yeah. writing them in letters of stone and all the rest of it. We're, yeah. we're, 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 we're open to suggestion and, um, uh, you know, it's quite an interesting journey. Yeah. Well, it's an ever so developing landscape, if you know what I mean. It is. It is. And it I is. don't think it'll ever stop. Like you just, the, the, the beauty of, um, I guess, you know, when you look at these pro like these blockchains, like Ethereum, the community of developers behind it, they're only just trying to improve the mechanisms yeah. of how it functions, yeah. you know, um, yeah. just so it can benefit and have more practicality use behind it, you know, and that yeah. it's not just one solid thing like Bitcoin is where Bitcoin is really just currency, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with the ERC, you know, there's multiple projects out there trying yeah. to do different things, you know, and that's the beauty of the whole smart contract system, you know, that you can mm. have a, a usability to it, you know what I mean? It's just not a currency alone on its own. That's right. It, I mean, the, the smart contracts are a one a wonderful thing. Mm. Uh, I mean, we did a little um, project for somebody uh, who's a supply chain system, and mm. and we put together um, uh, a little presentation for them about how smart contracts could help them with uh, supply chains. It was in fact something mm. coming from India, and how it you know it gets sent from. Najpur to Bombay or wherever it is and it then mm. gets on a boat and the boat takes it to wherever it is and the, it comes off the boat and it does customs clearance and it does this and it does that and the next thing and it's quite a complicated process but if you put all that onto a blockchain uh, each step uh, has to be completed before the next step can happen Yeah. and the, the great beauty about the smart contract is that you can't do the next step unless the previous step has been completed properly. Yeah. And, that, that you know, the, this particular person was, was very interested in, I don't know whether they're going to do it or not, I have no idea. Um, but the, the point is that it is a certain definite possibility as far as, um, uh, you know, uh, supply chains are concerned, that you can, you know, the man in India is due to get... Uh, I don't know, a million pounds, and yeah. um, he'll get his million pounds when it gets delivered to the factory in yeah. Luton or whatever it is. You know? Like uh, I know, <coughs> I know, um, one of the charity organisations out there was is utilising the blockchain so they can manage, um, the you know the the goods being, you know, transferred mm. from one intermediary to another, so nothing mm. gets lost along the way or. No one yeah. takes anything for their own pocket, you know, because mm. everything is accountable along the process until it reaches its end point, basically, you know. Mm. Mm. So, well, the other thing, just talking about charities, uh, and we, we, uh, it, uh, it'll happen eventually, but it's it's a long term project. Mm. Uh, the where charities go into a disaster area, the the basically, you know, monetary system is broken down. Mm. Um, and the one thing that's absolutely <laughs> ubiquitous, everybody's got a mobile phone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, I mean, I, one thing absolutely astonishes me always, we have a, a big issue with uh, people trying to cross the channel um, to get into the UK as illegal, what we call illegal immigrants, whether yeah. they are or not, it's a different matter. Yeah. Um, 
but they've all got mobile phones. Yeah. And they're all busy phoning back home and they're all doing this, <laughs> that, next thing. And these are people with supposedly nothing and, you know, mm. what have you. And I always, I always wonder, how do they continue to pay for their mobile phones yeah. when they're not earning any money? And the answer is because somebody gives them the money. Yeah, anyway, yeah. the point of the story is that uh, um, uh, one of the uh, UN, uh, UN, I think it's UNHCR they're called, yeah. um, they've looked very closely at using uh, cryptocurrencies in disaster areas because yeah. what they would do is they would simply say, um, you know, nobody's got any money, right, give everybody the equivalent of $1,000 worth of UNCR money or whatever yeah. it is, and then it gets traded backwards and forwards. Yeah. And they will then, at the end of the day, the people who are making the supplies will get those coins or tokens, whatever they are, taken back by the un uh, and paid in the local currency yeah uh, and that that eases things enormously and 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 makes absolute sense yeah no i, I get what you're saying the whole mobile phone aspect of the side of it because like yeah what we're talking about the countries like venezuela and stuff like that um everyone's got a mobile phone so yeah. everyone can just get some bitcoin whether it's family that sends it to them from another country but they'll be able to all get in that in the palm of their hand and they can go down to the local shopkeeper they can give it to them through the mobile phone you know with the qr codes and it makes it easy to to move money you know without having to mm. have too much going on you know what i mean unlike your know, normal fiat currency you've got to go to your bank you've got to set up banking documents you've got to you know set up your account and stuff like that before you can actually have something to hold your money in where you know, you get an app, you create a new wallet, and yeah, away you go. You get money in there, and you can start trading, which mm -hmm. I guess is is the is part of the brilliance of it of this whole cryptocurrency is that yeah, you're not having oh, no, to it's, deal it's, with anyone yeah, else. Yeah, it's, it's a really good, really good. Um, I mean, it has lots and lots of different uses which are beyond monetary, mm. uh, and I think that's really an important point. Yeah. So, just one other thing. What was the decision behind uh, increasing the circulation supply of Scott Coin? Well, basically, the the rec if, if we go back a bit to what we call V two, mm. um, there was no spare V two. There wasn't anything that we could give away. Although we did give some away ourselves mm. from our own holdings, uh, uh, and also there was no longevity in that because yeah. uh, you know the. the uh, we've talked about Bitcoin and how it's being, being I'm mined for another hundred years. So we needed yeah. a system whereby there was going to be Scott coin available for reward and mm. for uh, uh, making things happen. Yeah. And as a result of that, once we've finished the migration, which is to all intents and purposes finished now, mm. there'll be a certain amount of Scott coin out there. Yeah. Um, now what we've, pretty much decided although again this will come into the ieo and so on and be part and parcel of what we we say there won't be any there won't be any big issues between now and and that ieo um but in essence what we'll be looking to do is to uh put out about another one percent per annum in terms of uh you know helping people and one thing or another now that that is obviously coin that comes from what we would call treasury, if you like. Yeah, that's yeah. that's new coin, as it were, yeah. and that doesn't impinge on anything that anybody already holds. That's a separate separate so thing. So basically, and so one of the things we yeah. need to do is we need to make sure we've got new buyers coming in mm. over the the years. And yeah. then, again, we can we can simply the, the, you know there'll be a, 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 a for lack of a better expression a, a, a supervisory board. And they may say one year, actually, we're not going to put any out this year. Yeah, uh, make do with what you've got, kind of thing. So yeah. there's there's a lot of a lot of things about that. But what that really means is that we're looking very much to the future. We'll all be dead, but you know, two more generations of people will still be able to be helping other people, which is yeah. what we're really trying to do. So basically, you're you're locking some of that away, and then mm. um, over the years, you'll you'll release it, whether it's through uh, generosity of a charity or that you just release it into circulation um, mm. without doing it too quickly 
um, yes. that you decrease the value of the currency because at the end of the yeah. end of the day, you wanted to have some sort of substantial value, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, the um, uh, you know again going back to uh, uh, well, I would I would compare it with Ripple. I mean, basically, Ripple can just put out anything they like because they've mm. never put a thing in say, in place to say we're only going to release so much. Mm. So we think it's very important to say to people so that they have certainty uh, yeah. that it will only ever be x amount or x percent put out on an annual basis and it's not it's it's not going to be guaranteed that that's going to happen as mm. i say we it may be decided on any given year we're not going to put any out this yeah, year yeah. um and uh, you know it's 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 very very important uh, um uh, very important that we have um uh clarity on that kind of thing yeah all right um just one more thing i just want to clarify because you you mentioned IEO a lot is that mm. getting on it creating no it's not creating your own independent exchange but it's being part no. of an exchange is that right yes basically speaking what an IEO is and I, I can use Coinbase as a good example if you mm. want to do an IEO on Coinbase basically speaking you have to pay them a hundred thousand dollars to start with yeah and you also have to give them a hundred thousand dollars worth of your coin yeah, uh, and anybody can do that. That's yeah. you know, they, they they I mean, the, there's a certain amount of of uh, due diligence done, but it's pretty pretty limited, really. Yeah. So you know, we we kind of don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, but basically speaking, what they do is they uh, launch it on the exchange, so it becomes tradable on their exchange, mm. and in general terms, they have. Um, People who will come along and, you know, once the price is decided, they'll support that price for a month or whatever mm. it is and so on. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of that uh, that goes on. And, of course, uh, not only do they get paid the $100,000, they've also got $100,000 of your coin that they can release as they yeah. see fit and so on. Um, and and But then it's obviously on the exchange and it's tradable and you can buy it and sell it and do what you like. Yeah. And so the the IEO, I mean, it's IEO is sort of the the next level. Uh, if you if you go back to the stocks and shares, you have an IPO, an initial uh, uh, offering, and yeah. then we've moved on to an ICO, which was yeah. an initial coin offering, and that they've got a bit of a bad name actually. Yeah, they do. Um, and then moving on from that. Um, we then have the IEO, which is the initial exchange offering, and that mm. those are much better than an ICO. Really, there's a bit of yeah. oversight and so on. Yeah, no, that's good. Like, I I feel that's the next stage in the process is if you want to build awareness among people, you know, apart mm. from marketing and getting it into the eyeballs of everyone, just everyday people, is getting mm. it in front of the the traders and stuff like that, and have them. The, the currency circulating in some way, if you know what I mean. Mm. So, um, yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking somebody, forward to that. Somebody desperately trying to get hold of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look, I was going to wrap it up anyway. Um, okay. I pretty right. much asked all the questions I wanted to do, to ask you today. But um, yeah, one good. question I did have that's totally unrelated to all this is horses. What's your deal with it? Horses? You were sent, when you sent me that email, you're like, oh, you know, I could rev you up if I just basically throw things at you, but you're like you're happy to talk about horses. I don't remember that. <laughs> I uh, I, no, I mean, I, I think probably what I was meaning was I'll talk about anything at all you like, really. <laughs> um, horses, I, I, the, my, the thing I know about horses is you can't rely on them. Absolutely, <laughs> you cannot rely on them. Even, I mean, I remember reading a story many, many years ago about somebody who needed to make $1,000 and there was a horse that was 100 to 1 on to win. So he put uh, uh, whatever it was on the bet and the horse, <laughs> it was a flat race and the horse tripped over a gopher hole and didn't win and actually <laughs> lost his money. But, I mean, you know, so the, the, I've, no, I've no great belief in horses. But it's, but they're beautiful creatures and I love them dearly, but uh, uh, I don't know why a horse. I think probably I was just trying to make the point I can talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, oh, maybe. I tell you, I tell you two stories, mm, uh, two, not two stories, it. two things that I have been asked. Yeah. One is, who is your favorite movie character? And my m favorite movie character, without a shadow of a doubt, is is uh, Clint Eastwood. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the outlaw Josie Wales, fantastic film, and so on, or lots of other films mm. like that. 
And the other one is, is uh, what's your favorite book? And my favorite book, without a shadow of a doubt, is Lord of the Rings. Oh, uh, so uh, if that's any use to anyone, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, get it. I think the saying is, yeah, you could talk underwater, basically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now look, uh, I just want to thank you very much for your time. Um, um, it's a great pleasure, Neil. Great pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate yeah you taking the time out of your day to have a chat to me about this. Um, it gave me some great insight, but also uh, I enjoyed having a chat to you about the whole cryptocurrency space. Um, hey. I would have loved to ask you a bit more, but um, we could just I bet we could go on forever, you know, because I was interested about. Yeah, you were somewhere I read um, you're, in, you're into economy or you studied it. That's right. I watched an interview yeah. with you already and uh, you, were, you were an economist or you studied it? Yeah, no, I, I, I studied at the London School of Economics and yeah. uh, uh, I've, I've always maintained that the only reason they gave me a degree is because I, I was at the London School of Economics when there was all the 1968 uh, uh, riots and one thing or another. Mm. And the only reason they gave me a degree is because they didn't see me in any of the pictures. <laughs> of people rioting so they said uh, oh he's okay we'll give him one that's fine <laughs> but that, that. actually I'll, I'll just give you a little a little add-on to that yeah. i wanted to do uh uh what's called an mcim a master of um, chartered institute of marketing in yeah. uh, i think it was about 2000 i think it was mm. and uh you, if you had done a previous degree uh, you didn't have to do the whole course. You could do yeah. some other things. So I thought, oh, that's fine. I'll sort that out. So, <laughs> but I, I just, again, because of all that was going on at the time when I was at university, uh, I never actually collected or got um, my certificate oh, wow. um, or scroll. And so I thought, oh, I'll phone up. And I phoned up the university and I said, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, I, I was here at this time, and <laughs> oh yes, that's not a problem. You know, fine. And and, and I said, uh, and they said, what year was it? I said, oh, it was such and such. And they said, ah, there's a problem. <laughs> I said, What's the problem? They said, well, we had a flood in 1972, and all our records from the 60s were destroyed. <laughs> I thought, God. Oh. So anyway, but anyway, they, 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 it was quite interesting because they said, can you remember any of your lecturers? And of course, that was this. Talk about struggling! That was, through. but there was one I remember very clearly who mm. I, I just thought was so ridiculously funny. I'm not sure I learnt anything from him, but I enjoyed his lectures. Yeah. So I said, oh, so and so, you see, and uh, and they said, oh yes, no, you're obviously here. If you know him, you're obviously here. We'll, we'll. <laughs> so this wrote me a very nice letter saying that uh, I I had actually done the course and had had passed my exams, which I'm sure they had no idea whether I had or I hadn't. But it was very nice they did mm. that, so that was good. Oh, all right. Well, look, once again, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure. Anyone, I may say if anyone gets in touch with you and wants a copy of my book, that's fine. I'm very happy to send it for free. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you'd like me to talk to you again, I'll do that with pleasure. Oh, it's been a very awesome. good experience. Yeah, no, <laughs> thank you very much for your time. So what what was the Scott Coin website, just for all the viewers out there who want to look up the look up Scott Coin and learn a bit about it? Well, well you, you, you can look at scottcoin.com, but the, the actual website is – scottcoinproject.com just all one word scottcoinproject.com awesome and uh, you can get me I'm temple t-e-m-p-l-e yep. at scottcoinproject.com oh beautiful look to all my viewers out there I just want to thank you very much for your time for watching today's episode of the Neil Coots show with Temple Melville um, don't forget to hit the subscribe subscribe button to find out about future episodes and also smash the like button down there on the right-hand side if you really enjoyed it. But for myself, Neil Coots and Temple Melville, thank you very much and have a good day.